All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to record and export video using the scene track plugin. So I've created a quick scene here, nothing special. Here's all my objects. I dragged in the third person controller, just part of the standard assets for Unity. And we're going to set this up really quick. So usually what I like to do is I like to create an empty game object and put that at zero. Probably already seen this a few times now. I might call this game scene. And what I like to also do is put anything I'm going to be tracking inside of that. I don't include lights since we don't track lights. You can track positions. It'll just show up as a null object. I'm going to call this ramp. OK. So to record video, you need to create a new camera. There we are. So now we have two cameras. What we want to do with this one, we're going to use it to overview the scene, because I haven't scripted a camera or anything. So I want to be able to see everything that's going on as, as well as possible. All right, so the camera's positioned. Isn't it lovely? So here we can see everything that's going on. I want to add a camera tracker to it. So I'm going to just take this main camera and I'm going to turn off the audio listener because sometimes that can cause con conflict. With the camera, I don't really need to put it in the game scene. I can, depending on what I want to do with it, but I'm going to leave it out for now. These ones we'll put trackers on eventually. I'm just showing you specifically video. So let's add a component to our camera. We're going to call this, maybe I'll just rename this so it makes it clear. Scene track camera A. You can have multiple cameras in a scene. So let's just add. And let's just look up scene track, start typing that in, scene track camera. There's a couple of options here, not much. You can pick the resolution you want. I'm going to go 640 by 480 just to keep the file size fairly small. Uh, for any of you that aren't used to video, video can be very large, um, even if it is compressed. And right now, by default, the camera is disabled. I want to make sure the camera is enabled for tracking. We disable it automatically just so that if you have multiple cameras and you're adding things, they're not all going to be conflicting with one another if you forget to disable one. So you just have to make sure you click off the disable camera. Additionally, we're going to go into the scene track preferences because this is pretty important to make sure that we have all our settings consistent. So usually in the video, you don't necessarily want to go 60 frames per second. It's not necessary. So typically, I like to, if we go to the video section here, I like to stick around 30 or less, depending on what the project is. If you click default, it will set itself to MP4 at 30 frames per second. You can do a quick time. You can also do GIF files or JPEG or PNG sequences. Now, with the JPEG and PNG sequences, if you render them, they're not necessarily going to be at the right frame rate because we actually use the FFmpeg assembler to make sure everything's happening at the right frame rate because some frames might get dropped during the recording. So the FFmpeg system will actually put it together. So I'll explain more about that when it's actually recording and you'll see what we've done. Everything here is set pretty well. Your animation does not have to be at 30 frames per second if your video is. You can have them at different frame rates and they should line up just fine. Same thing with events is it doesn't really matter. But typically I like to stick at 30 or 24 because I'm mostly doing film. So this is fine, okay? You can choose other formats, but I'm going to stick with MP4 for now. Let's just add our, scene, our trackers to the actual scene here. So if I want to, I'm just going to add a scene track to this parent component here. So we'll call, we'll just do a scene track object. And because I've created this empty object, I can add the children to this as well. Not entirely necessary to record video. So for now, let's just leave the game scene object there. We're just going to record video for now. Okay, so refresh, we've got one object tracking. And let's press play. Okay, there's our character. We've got some objects bouncing around. Different things to do. Great. OK, let's stop it. Now, before we go, well, actually, let's just go refresh. And simply, all we have to do is go export video. We pick where we want to export. Usually, I export them outside the game directory. So this is, this is our game directory where all our assets live in Unity. But I usually go back and put them into um, scene track exports or something like that. I'm going to put video here. I've done a couple of tests here to make sure we've got them. So we'll call this Ethan Take 1. There we go. And you'll see it'll start exporting the file. Now, this will take a little bit of time to go through. I'm going to pop out of this Unity for a second to explain something to you while it's exporting. If we actually go into the Unity project, what you'll see is there is a temp folder. In this temp folder is a whole bunch of PNG images. And you might even notice they're flipped upside down. These PNG images are what's generated when you record a take with a camera in the scene. 
what we do is we actually reassemble that together. And you'll see there's a text file. That text file is actually what the FFmpeg uses to put the file together and make sure that the frame rate's right. So when I'm talking about when you create a PNG sequence, it may have some extra frames here and there that don't line up properly, and that gets sorted out with the FFmpeg assembler. Once it's completed, this will pop up, and you'll see that it's compiling the frames together to ultimately create the video right here. Go to video, and there it is. And this we can play back. You can see the files playing back just fine at the appropriate frame rate. So that's pretty much how easy it is to export video um, by capturing something. You can have multiple cameras that are triggered by the timeline if you want to by having this disable camera option switched on and off. So there you go. That's the, that's the basics right there. And the next one, we'll take a look at exporting MIDI.